Hi there, welcome to a troubleshooting video. This one is looking at the X-Touch Mini and getting the LEDs to light up. I've had one or two comments at the end of one of my videos uh, that they couldn't get the, the LEDs to light up and I can't work out why. And it's too difficult to try and have that discussion using just the comments underneath the video. So I thought I'd try making a troubleshooting video concentrating on the places where things might have gone wrong and uh, hopefully we can uh, shed some light on that. Uh, so the first thing I thought of was we need to make sure that Axis and O's runs in administrator mode so it's got to have some elevated privileges. And you can do that by right clicking and choosing run as administrator here but that you have to remember to do that every time. Um, if you forget that and just double click it will run in normal mode. So what I've done is I've gone to properties here and in the compatibility tab, uh, run down the bottom here, uh, run this program as administrator, tick that box and click OK. And from then on, it'll always run in administrator mode. But equally, um, within Axis and O's itself, in the application menu, you can tell it here, always start as administrator. Now I've got both switched on to make sure um, it's a belt and braces approach. Um, next thing is to make sure that your um, X touch is up and running before you launch uh, Axis and O's because it's going to um, hunt around the ports and see what's connected to it. So if I just uh, bring up my camera, uh, there, and so I've got a camera pointed at my uh, X Touch, and you can see it's in and powers on, and everything's working there. Then here, if we check our hardware, make sure that MIDI devices are enabled. Make sure that ticks on, and it you just need to do it once. It'll remember that over a restart or a, a you know a reload, reload. So uh, just switch that on. And then have a look at the MIDI devices that are connected. So show MIDI devices. And you should see X-Touch Mini in two places, one on the MIDI in and one on the MIDI out. Now we're not worried about the MIDI in here particularly. It needs to be there, uh, but you don't need to worry about the ID number or anything. It will automatically access those, we'll sort that out. Uh, but the uh, MIDI out, you'll notice that it can have a different ID number. It might be the same, but it might be different. Um, but we need to pay attention to that because we need to know the ID number. When we write the script later on, we need to know uh, which uh, ID has been allocated. And it should remain the same uh, throughout. Once it's allocated, it should stay there. Um, unless you do a massive change to your, to your hardware, uh, plugging in other MIDI devices. But really, that should stay as it is. So uh, my MIDI out, when I was sending messages out to it, I'll be sending it to ID to device number seven and you'll see the relevance of that later on. Okay, so that shows I've got MIDI hardware up and running and everything's working. It seems to be working. What I'm going to, next thing to do, of course, would be to launch a flight simulator. Now I've had mine running in the background uh, here, so I'll just bring that back into full screen. So what I'm going to try and do is get to the, uh, firstly, make sure I can switch the LED on. I'm going to concentrate on this LED here and get that to switch on and off using a script. And then I'm going to connect it to the beacon light so that when I turn the beacon light on, um, this uh, indicator will come on. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bit of scripting here using my script editor, I'm just going to type in the script that I want to turn that, that, that bulb on. So as always with binary, uh, one is on. So I'm going to send a one and I press the space bar and the editor puts a, a dot in to show where the spaces are. And then the command needs to be in brackets. So I'm putting both brackets in just to make sure I remember to close my brackets. And the instruction is, I'm sending a 1 to MIDI. So this greater than sign is not acting as a greater than at the moment. It is acting 
um, to say it's an output I'm sending this to the MIDI and I want to send it to device number seven so it's colon seven that was the ID that we saw on that menu and what I'm sending to it is the note on command which may seem strange but don't forget MIDI is really designed for musical instruments so we're sending it as if we pressed a note on the keyboard so it's a note on and we're sending it over channel one MIDI has a number of channels but one is the universal challenge channel it's sending it to every device um, but it only gets responded to by device number seven but the, everything will hear it this message and we're going to send it to oops uh, to zero bulb zero is this one here so we're sending a zero if you wanted this light it'll be number one two three four five six seven and then up to 15 on here so that one is bulb zero that we're going to try and light up now without doing anything not saving the, the script or anything i can just press the test button here and that will run the script and you can see that the led is lit up to turn it off i send a zero to it so let's just change that to a zero hit test and that goes that's off so what I want to do now is to um, link that if I just move some windows around a little bit I want to link this a script here so that it checks whether this uh, beacon light let's zoom in a bit here this beacon light here whether that's switched on or not and switch it on if that's on so let's just change the script here so we're going to send the one so we need to use first we need to read a variable and so the variable I'm going to look for is the beacon variable in the lights the beacon and it's this one here so that's the variable I'm looking at space one space so I'm looking to compare whatever the variable is to one and see if they are equal so you put two equal signs in and the space so that's it that's the comparison done now I want to, to write the command that happens if they are equal so if and these are curly brackets that I'm putting in brace they're called braces so they're not ordinary brackets they're curly brackets so I'm going to cut that and drop it in there and I'm going to put spaces in here so no space in between the if and the curly bracket that's the important bit so that's what to do if they do match else and again put the curly brackets around that what i would like it to do is send a zero so i'm changing that one to a zero so let's go through this again This here is uh, read the variable for the beacon light, compare it to one, and if they match, send a one to that bowl. If they don't match, send a zero. So I can test that. If I click uh, the test there, nothing happens because the switch is off. But if I switch the switch on and run the test again, you'll see that the indicator is on. Turn that off run the test and it switches off so the script works but it uh, it, it means I've got you know I'm running it manually what I want it to do is to run automatically so I need to save this script I'm going to make a new script group um, called trouble for troubleshooting and add that in and now I've got a new group and I'm going to save this in that group I'm just going to call it LED and save as new. 
So what I can do now, if I just get this out of the way, I can allocate this to the aircraft. I can do scripting, aircraft automated scripts. And from the trouble group, pick the LED and click add. So this one here is going to be repeating every 100 milliseconds and just running that script. So it'd be just checking whether that button's on or not. So let's close that and close that. Now the script is actually running. So as soon as I click this switch, you should see the indicator come on and off. So it's working here. And in fact, it doesn't matter whether I'm clicking on here or not. If I, I've got a honeycomb yolk. So if I click on the uh, honeycomb yolk and turn the beacon on and off, that affects the um, LED. And I've also got it programmed into a stream deck. So if I press the beacon button on my stream deck, that works. What I'm going to do now, just for completeness, I'm actually going to program it into this switch to um, so that you can use that as a way of turning the beacon on and off. So just to show you how that works. Again, I'm going to search for the beacon toggle event. So in lights, I want to toggle these lights, so we'll double click on there and put that in. And all I do is press this button here, and you'll see that it's just picked up without me doing anything. The it's recognized the event and it's recognized that it's coming in on the, from device number two. Um, so remember, we sent it to device seven, but it automatically sees it as coming in from device two. So I can click on add there. Now, when I press this button here, you see it uh, has come up on the screen here. That's worked. And um, press the button again and it's gone off. So the indicator light's working. Now, just so you can actually see the script, because I've I know that it looks a bit small in the, um, the editor. If I bring that up onto the screen here, and let's get that out of the way. So these are the curly brackets I'm talking about. And one of the problems people forget is no space between the if and the brackets and no, uh, same here, um, no gap, no space between the else and the bracket. Space is just about everywhere else. Uh, I often put a space just there as well and like I have done before the one, it'll work without it. But it's just to be sort of consistent, really having a, a space there is not a bad idea. Okay, so that's it. Um, if you wanted it to light up a different bulb, you can do that by changing the number here. Uh, let's get out of that and back into the scripting. just bring that uh, script back in again so I could light up a different bulb if I wanted to uh, you can add more lines to this script if there for the, all the other lights so if you wanted landing lights you could add that to this list um, so you just look up the variable put that in and make sure you uh, go for a different LED um, that that's how it works really so hopefully uh, if you follow those steps we should be able to sort out why yours isn't working Okay, best of luck.